Hello, compassionate viewers, and welcome to Healthy Living. Recent studies have suggested that long-chain omega-3 fatty acids containing docosahexaenoic acid, or DHA, and eicosapentaenoic acid, or EPA, can be beneficial to adults in maintaining a healthy heart and to fetuses and young children in facilitating brain development. Thus, some consume fish or fish oil, which contain these acids. But what does science say about the physical effects of omega-3 fatty acids obtained from this animal source? Also, are these substances even needed by our bodies in the first place? On today's program, Dr. David Jenkins, Professor of Nutritional Sciences at the University of Toronto in Canada and Director of the Clinical Nutrition and Risk Factor Modification Center at Toronto's St. Michael's Hospital, shares his knowledge on these subjects. Through the years, Dr. Jenkins' research has focused mainly on using diet to prevent and treat hyperlipidemia or high levels of lipids or fats in the bloodstream and diabetes and has published over 200 papers and other works on this and related topics. For his outstanding contributions to the field of medicine, he has received numerous awards including the Canadian Society of Nutritional Sciences Borden Award, the American College of Nutrition's Goldsmith Award for Clinical Research and the Benjamin Spock Award for Compassion in Medicine by the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Let's begin by discussing coronary heart disease, a chronic condition in which the arteries leading to the heart become narrowed or blocked with plaque, resulting in less oxygen reaching this vital organ. If the heart suffers from insufficient oxygen, a heart attack may occur. Well, let's go back to the heart because we're really interested in what's happening to the heart. And one of the real problems that we were facing was when we did angioplasty, when we put a balloon into the artery and expanded it and opened the artery up so it got rid of the, of the sort of the, the constriction in the artery. Mm -hmm. um, post angioplasty, we got what they called re stenosis. In other words, the, the artery closed down again very quickly mm -hmm. and very often blocked up or became as narrow as it was, or even narrower, than before you'd expanded it. Some scientific studies in the 1990s concluded that consuming fish oil could help stop the closing of artery walls and hence prevent coronary heart disease. However, in recent years, researchers have re-examined these studies and have reached a different conclusion. We failed to bother to follow up. The angioplasty studies didn't all turn out to be rosy. Dr. Alexander Leaf was one of the people who did one of the decisive studies that showed that it really didn't seem to work in the way that we thought. Another problem occurred with a study on heart attacks and fish oil. Four reports of clinical trials said that the use of fish oil prevented heart attacks. However, five years after the first study, those who consumed fish oil fared worse than the control group. What they didn't bother about is the DART follow-up. When, they, when the DART, when DART study was followed up, uh, the metabolic memory, as we now w w would call this, even though the, the, the people were not maintaining their randomization to test or control, mm -hmm. um, they ended up doing worse at five years. So it becomes important when you string a study out and watch what happened long term. And then the DART 2 study, the DART angina study, was, took place. Same, same personnel who'd done DART 1, which was a raging success. Mm -hmm. They looked at men with angina. When men get, you know, chest pain, that's, that's a, uh, those, those, those gentlemen are more at risk for heart disease later on. So it was a very justified group to look at. Mm -hmm. And they looked at fish and fish oil. The fish oil actually did worse. And actually the fish oil was significantly worse. Mm -hmm. So, uh, more heart attacks or in, in the men who'd, who'd had uh, the fish oil. It is not necessary to consume fish or fish oil to obtain long-chain omega-3 fatty acids. They can instead be acquired from common plant-based food sources. For example, flax seed and canola oil contain short-chain omega-3 fatty acids that can be converted by the body into the long-chain type for EPA. There is less evidence for DHA synthesis, but if significant amounts are required, they can be obtained from algal sources. 
But there are a lot of supplements now, like nuts and soy. That nuts and soy and these sort of things, yes. Uh, uh, but, but these give you the alpha linolenic acid, the shorter chain omega-3. Okay. And the shorter chain omega-3 fatty acid may actually um, give rise to the longer chain uh, icosapentaenoic acid, the EPA. Mm. Um, and there's a reasonable conversion, 5% or so. So that's, that's really quite respectable. Dietary supplements are also available that provide DHA and EPA from the same source where fish obtain theirs, algae. There are ways of producing the long chain fats, if they're necessary, mm -hmm. um, by um, plant or algal sources. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think they're already being produced, they're already being used for baby formula. So there's really no reason why we shouldn't be focusing on this much more than we are. And we're not at present. According to Dr. Jenkins, the essentiality for fish sources of omega-3s has not been established. So what we're saying is that this should be a wake-up call for certainly very careful research in this area, more studies, mm -hmm. um, and if we come to the conclusion that it is absolutely essential that we have uh, DHA and EPA, mm -hmm. then uh, we should be getting these not from marine sources. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that I think is the message and we can get them from other than marine sources. Mm -hmm. When I say marine, I mean fish sources. When we return, Dr. Jenkins will discuss the consequences to the environment from fish consumption as another reason to use only plant-based sources of omega fatty three acids. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television.